Hi, I'm Margret. In this video I'm going to introduce you to association and multiplicity. Associations show relationships between classes. Here we have two classes, class A and class B. We are going to look at unary associations and also at binary associations. Let's start with unary associations. Between the classes we have a single line with one arrow. Class A knows about class B. Class B knows nothing about class A. That's what this association means. Let's have a look at an example. I could have a person and an address. And there's an association between a person and an address. Sometimes people think of it as a has a relationship in contrast to the is a relationship of inheritance. So we could say a person has an address. And it means the person knows its address, the person, class person knows about the address, but the address does not know who is living there. A class address does not know about class person. So here we have again the more general view with class A and class B. Notice that our classes are represented by rectangles with the class name only. Many times in UML class diagrams we want to show more detail. This is also possible in connection with associations. So here I have class A and I can see at this point that class A has a method. It's called do something and class B has another method which is called action B. We are also presenting the association together with a name. It's called my B. Compare that to this representation here of class B as I had before and in class A I also added a, a value in my attributes field. So here I have an attribute it's called my B and it is of type class B. You can look at both representations. So representation A has the emphasis on the relationship between class A class B. It has the association drawn in with the arrow here. Representation B has the fact that class A has a attribute of type class B written in the attribute field. Those two representations are equivalent, they are identical. Unary associations and attributes, those are the same things. Which version you should use depends on where your emphasis is. If you want to emphasize the relationship of class A to class B, the arrow is a great way to emphasize that. If you just want to have a closer look at class A, entering the information in the attribute area is a good way to go. Sometimes there's a temptation to do both at the same time, but that is not a good idea. What would happen here is the following. You would have a class A that has an attribute of class B called my B. And in addition, it has a second attribute of type class B. And again, it is called my B. You have to choose between one view or the other. Let's have another look at our example. This time, the classes are shown in more detail. Notice that class person has two attributes, address of type address and name of type string. Both types of representation are used in the same diagram. This is frequently done and it is perfectly fine as long as the attributes are different, so we don't have any duplications. There are three types of unary associations. So far, we looked at the most general one, which we just called association. There are two more, aggregation and composition. Both of them describe a whole part relationship. Aggregations are associations with a whole part relationship. Notice the hollow diamond. 
it is next to the class that represents the whole. Let's look at an example. We have a lake and the lake has a slide. The slide is part of the lake. Notice the hollow diamond is next to the class that represents the whole. The lake is the whole, the slide is the part. Now let's look at composition. Compositions are aggregations where the life cycle of the part class depends on that of the whole class. That means the construction and destruction of the part depends on the whole. Here we have the filled diamond and again the diamond is next to the class that represents the whole. Here is an example. We have a company and we have a department. The department is part of the company. Also, the construction and destruction of a department depends on the company. That means the department can only exist in the context of the company. We can't have a department if we don't have a company. That's different from our example with the slide. We can build a slide, create a man-made lake, bring the slide to the lake. Now the slide is part of the lake. The existence of the slide is independent of the existence of the lake. The existence of the department depends on the existence of the company. That's the difference between aggregation and composition. Now I want to briefly talk about binary associations. Here I have class C and class D. Class C knows about class D and class D knows about class C. Notice there are no arrows. Error on both sides gives us as much information as no error at all. So we just make a simple line to indicate that this is a binary association. Another thing I want to briefly talk about is multiplicity. Multiplicity allows us to specify how many objects are in this relationship. For example, a car has one engine, a car has four wheels. So we could say something has exactly n items or maybe zero or one, zero or many, one or many, or between n and m. So if I would say between two and four, that would be two, three or four. Notice, this is different from Java. Here I have one more example. We have a house. My house has exactly one kitchen, one bath, and one or more bedrooms. All three of these, kitchen, bath, and bedroom, are rooms. Here we have inheritance. Notice the hollow arrowhead. Here we have the black diamonds that indicates this is composition. Kitchen is part of the house, bath is part of the house, bedroom is part of the house. Kitchen, bath and bedroom can only exist when the house exists. If we don't have a house anymore, we don't have kitchen, bath or bedroom. Now in addition, the house is also a mailbox. The mailbox is part of the house, but it can exist independently. We can create a mailbox, create a house and then bring the mailbox, set it up in front of the house. Now it's part of the house, it's the mailbox that belongs to the house, but the life cycle of the mailbox is independent of the house. The house also has a mortgage. Now mortgage is not part of the house. If I take away the mortgage, I don't have less of the house. It's still the same house. Mortgage is associated with the house. The house has a mortgage, but it is not part of the house. And some houses have a mortgage, some don't. They have, some are paid off, so they don't have a mortgage anymore.